My name is Jane Patton. I'm a campaigns manager with the Center for International Environmental Law. Together with our partners at the Center for Biological Diversity and Earthworks, we published a report earlier this month, October of 2021, entitled Formosa Plastics Group, a Serial Offender of Environmental and Human Rights, a Case Study. The report details Pla Formosa Plastics Group's decades-long history, exemplifying the profound risks that the plastics industry poses to human health, human rights, ecosystems, and the global climate. The pattern of human rights violations and environmental degradation detailed in the report is not exceptional. Around the world, communities living in the shadow of plastics and petrochemical facilities have experienced similar disasters and tell similar stories, underscoring the that the industry itself poses significant and recurring threats. The report concludes with calls to actions for policy and decision makers with regard to this particular company, Formosa Plastics Group, but also with recommendations for policy and decision makers to hold all companies accountable and to stop the plastics crisis and the harm that it engenders. Formosa Plastics Group, originally founded in 1954, is now Taiwan's largest conglomerate. The company maintains industrial operations in Taiwan, China, Vietnam, Indonesia, and the United States and operates subsidiaries engaged in a wide range of industrial activities, including petrochemical production, oil exploration, drilling and refining, power generation, and manufacturing of steel, textiles, pharmaceuticals, electronics, automobiles, and more. In 2018, Formosa Plastics Group reported 78.3 billion US dollars in sales revenue, translating to 13.1 billion US dollars in profits. Formosa Plastics Group is the umbrella enterprise under which many subsidiaries or affiliate companies with overlapping and shared executive leadership are organized. Such a web of corporate relationships can obfuscate control, it can insulate management structures from scrutiny, and it makes it difficult to identify and assert jurisdiction over the entity responsible for any harms, often thwarting efforts at accountability. Our research in the report focused in on the plastics and petrochemicals products manufactured by Formosa Group or one or more of its subsidiaries and affiliates, highlighting the significant known health impacts associated with each product. These include ethylene and its resultant plastics, PET, low density polyethylene and high density polyethylene, in addition to ethylene glycol, ethylene oxide, ethylene dichloride, propylene and its resultant plastics polypropylene, Vinyl chloride monomer, uh, Formosa Plastics is actually one of the world's largest producers of its downstream plastic PVC, along with hydrochloric acid, caustic soda, and paraxylene. Many of these products, components, and additives are known human carcinogens or have other demonstrated toxic impacts on people, especially children, from long-term or acute exposure. These impacts include headache, nausea, vomiting, respiratory effects, uh, fainting, or even coma, neurotoxicity, skin and eye burns, and frostbite, behavioral changes, in addition to the cancer-causing impacts. Because of the toxicity of the chemical inputs and byproducts associated with petrochemicals and plastics production, the refining and manufacturing processes of plastics pose inherent risks to human health and the environment. And when such dangerous industrial processes are run by a company with a track record of environmental health and safety violations, workers and local communities face heightened risks. An overview of key incidents in the history of Formosa Plastics Groups and its affiliates illustrates the human and environmental toil, toll of the company's business practices. In the United States, Cambodia, Vietnam, and its home country of Taiwan, the company has a long history of risking public harm for private gain and putting workers and communities at unnecessary risk. Through hundreds of incidents, large and small, during its 65 years of operations, Formosa Plastics Group or its subsidiaries have been labeled variously as a serial offender, a state's biggest polluter, and the entity responsible for a, com a country's worst environmental disaster. In addition to a track record of apparent disregard for worker and community safety, Formosa Plastics Group has been repeatedly hostile toward residents working to protect health and safety, ways of life, livelihoods, economies, and resources near sites the company operates. 
safety failures and environmental violations at Formosa Plastics facilities have resulted in harm to potentially thousands of people. The company's practices have caused fear and panic, loss of livelihoods, injury, and even death. Industrial accidents have killed at least 24 people and injured dozens more. In the seaport town of Suhanikville, Cambodia, where Formosa Plastics Corporation dumped toxic waste laden with mercury, five people died and at least 600 more were injured in the ensuing panic. In Iliopolis, Illinois, in the US, where five people died, including a husband and wife who worked in the plant, and eight more were injured in an explosion and chemical fire resulting from an avoidable accident. In Point Comfort, Texas, also in the United States, where repeated incidents, explosions, leaks, fires, over the years resulted in nearly four dozen injuries and put the surrounding community into lockdown several times. In Ha Tin Province, Vietnam, where allegedly rushed construction demands and apparent corner cutting resulted in the direct loss of at least 14 lives, physical injuries to dozens more, and where a toxic waste discharge at the Formosa Plastics Steel Production Company decimated 125 miles of coastal Vietnam, killing 300 tons of fish and limiting the livelihoods of more than 200,000 people. The country still has not fully recovered. And finally, in Yunlin County, where Formosa's largest facilities operate in Taiwan, over 10,000 people have been forced to evacuate because of gas leaks after an explosion. And scientists have linked significant cancer rates in the area to the conglomerate's facilities there. From all of these incidents, it is clear that Formosa Plastics is not a good neighbor. Outside of Formosa Plastics facilities in Point Comfort, Texas, in the United States, visible all over the bay there, were billions of tiny plastic pellets called nurdles. Nurdles are the industry nickname for the pellet form used to transport plastic resins before production and processing into familiar plastics products. The pellets are not just a nuisance, they are noxious. Like nearly all plastics, Nurdles contain endocrine disrupting chemicals that can harm fish, animal, and human populations. Nurdles can also be vectors for other toxicants and pathogens, accumulating other contaminants and being mistaken by fish for food. It took 10 years of daily sample collections and a citizen lawsuit to hold the company accountable for this discharge in Texas. A judge cited the collected evidence of over 20 million nurdles as an indication of enormous violations, pinning the company as a serial offender and criticizing state regulators for not ensuring that the site was in compliance. In 2019, Formosa agreed to a $50 million settlement of that lawsuit, the largest ever reached in a case of that kind in the United States. Yet the company still plans to expand. Its high profile expansion project in St. James, Louisiana, right next door to Point Comfort, is poised to exacerbate systemic racism, to undermine human rights, and to inflict environmental harm. The St. James complex, dubbed by developers as the Sunshine Project, encompasses plans for 14 chemical plants, including ethane crackers, low and high density polypropylene plants, power plants, and wastewater treatment facilities. The facility is planned to be built in a predominantly black part of St. James Parish, where more than half of the parish's industrial facilities are already located. The complex is currently permitted to double the toxic emissions in St. James Parish, in addition to releasing more than 13 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalents into the atmosphere. Given the track record of existing facilities within the Formosa Plastics Group, it is no surprise that the plans to build and operate new facilities, especially of this nature, under a newly created subsidiary are controversial. In light of this history, the report then takes a very close look at the implications of Formosa Plastics history and expansion plans for human rights. Under international human rights law, countries have an obligation to respect, protect, and fulfill basic rights and freedoms inherent to all human beings. Private enterprise and companies also have a responsibility to respect those rights. Those rights include freedom of thought, equality before the law, a right to life, 
equal access, liberty and security, protection against discrimination, equal pay for equal work, among many others. In fact, just recently in early October, the Human Rights Council passed with no opposition the right to a healthy environment, upholding a right already protected under many state constitutions and laws. But throughout Formosa Plastics Group's history, governments have failed to uphold their obligations by allowing the conglomerate to maintain practices that erode rights and freedoms. In some instances, governments have looked the other way or actively facilitated harm. For its part, Formosa Plastics appears to have been complicit in or turned a blind eye, a blind eye to government conduct that has undermined the human rights of communities and workers under the Formosa umbrella. Our report on Formosa Plastics Group includes a first of its kind comprehensive analysis of the ways in which Formosa Plastics Group appears to have violated or been complicit in the violation of a suite of human rights. That includes freedom from expression and association, violations of the freedom from arbitrary detention and torture, violations of freedom from discrimination, violations of the right to a healthy environment, violations of access to information and right to remedy, and especially violations of the right to health and the right to a dignified life. We hope that this report will also serve as both a warning and a reminder that the risks to human rights and the environment detailed within the report are not limited to Formosa Plastics Groups and its subsidiaries operations. They are systemic throughout the plastics industry. Petrochemical facilities pose a threat to surrounding populations regardless of their location and what company is operating them. And across the world, petrochemical facilities are disproportionately located in low-income and marginalized communities. There is still so much that we can do to end this harm and prevent others. Political and financial decision makers at all levels can take action to prevent further harm by Formosa Plastics Group, to provide access to justice for those who have suffered harm to date, and to protect human rights in the environment, including by enforcing environmental health and safety standards, rescinding or not reissuing permits granted to Formosa Plastics Group to build the St. James Complex or expand other facilities, and by holding the company accountable for the harms it has already wrought in Taiwan, in Vietnam, and in the United States, including cleaning up contamination and providing adequate remedy. We are calling for a number of measures to protect against similar harms to people and the environment occurring throughout the plastics pro production supply chain, including banning new plastics production plants, ending tax benefits or other public financial incentives to the, to the petrochemical industry, ending private investment capital or support to petrochemical companies, and excluding plastics and petrochemical production from finance and investment por portfolios that are attempting to move away from fossil fuels. An industry-wide problem calls for industry-wide solutions. After all, as we always say in the Break Free From Plastic movement, to stop plastic pollution, stop making plastics. Thank you all.